Hey everyone, this is Kyle. Welcome back to my channel, Ace in the Desert. So today is part three of my Let's Learn Bridge series, and today I thought I'd dedicate a shorter lesson, hopefully, but one dedicated just to kind of explaining how bidding works. Um, more importantly, um, just kind of think about how you describe your hand, the different roles in bidding, and hopefully give you enough where you can sort of improvise how you'll handle the bidding phase of the game. So bidding is a communic you can think of it as a communication game. Your goal is to describe the strength and shape of your hand to partner in order to reach the best contract. The best contract usually is the one where you have the biggest fit, whether that's a no trump if you don't really have a fit, or a suit if you have eight or more cards in a particular suit together with your partner. And then the other goal is to get to the right strain. So the right strain involves looking for a game bonus if for extra points, if it's there, or the slam, or very rarely the grand slam bonus, if you're going to try to take 12 or 13 of the 13 tricks available in the deck. Um, so essentially, there are four different roles you could be in as a bidder. The one we're going to focus on today is called being opener. So opener is the first person um, to describe a, a, sh a feature of their hand in an auction. They're the first person to bid um, an actual bid. Partner of the opener is known as responder because they have to deal with now partner has shown an opening hand and they have to respond to that and engage in a conversation. And then... The last primary role is known as the overcaller. Overcaller is someone that is bidding in an auction, um, but is not the first person to bid and is an opponent of one of the other people that have already bid. And then partner of the overcaller is known as advancer. Advancer's role is has some subtleties, but is very similar to responder. Um, just like Responder, Advancer is kind of trying to field partner's bid, engage in a conversation, and get somewhere if they need to. Um, so today we're going to focus a bit on Opener. Um, so I'm going to, before we talk about Opening, we actually have to talk about um, units of kind of how to communicate. So we've talked about shape a little bit, but um, one thing we haven't described is a term known as high card points. High card points are a way to evaluate the strength of your hand. Um, now, if you happen to watch my last video, the little side series, I did describe what high card points is. Um, but if you, you know, watched a few minutes of that and were overwhelmed, like, I totally get it. Um, that was just meant to be a little preview. And so I'm going to re-describe briefly what high card points are. So high card points are four points for an ace, three for a king, two for a queen, one for a jack. Um, there are ten points total in each suit. 40 total points in a deck. An average and has therefore 10 points because um, a priori, not knowing anything about um, any hand, you expect them to be distributed evenly. But of course, um, they could distribute any number of ways. Someone could have up to 37 points in a deck if they have um, 13 face cards. Um, or you could be dealt, you know, a bunch of, you could be dealt a hand called a Yarborough. A Yarborough is a hand with no card higher than the nine. Um, these are all possibilities, but average is 10. Um, and so this is a useful method is to just count your high card points before you start a hand. Um, and then you can use that to make decisions. Like, do I have an above average strength hand? Do me and partner together, are we likely to have at least half the deck? Which means, um... If you have more than half the deck, you're in a good position to buy a contract, right? Half the deck probably equals seven tricks, especially if you find a trump suit that if you have a, a good fit with partner as a source for tricks, like if you have eight cards in a suit together, um, maybe that's four tricks already, and that's, you know, you're getting on your way. Um, so in terms of the role of opener, your goal is to have... Um, a little bit above average strength. So usually the classical, classically we tell beginners a king more than average, so 13. 
Um, but you could have 12, and as you become an expert and learn a little bit more about hand evaluation, you might find excuses to open um, with even an average strength hand, like 10 or 11. Um, so the first thing when you pick up a hand, there's two things you should do. The two things you're going to do is, one, count your high grip points, and two, you're going to look at your shape, and you're going to make a decision. Um, you're going to decide if you're balanced or if you're unbalanced. So what is balanced versus unbalanced? So an unbalanced hand is a hand usually with a five-card suit, um, and it can basically we have four different types of hands, right? We have a single-suited hand. A single-suited hand is a hand with like six or more cards in a suit. Um, that hand is likely to be, that hand is single suited. Um, you have a very long suit and that's going to be a source of tricks. And you want to tell partner, I have an unbalanced hand and I have a lot of, I have a lot of cards in the suit. Um, the second thing you could have is a two suited hand. So a two suited hand is like a single suited hand. It's if you have a second suit. And we usually describe having length in a suit usually is typically four more cards. So um, so I should say a, an unbalanced hand usually has six or more cards. An unbalanced hand is like having nine cards between two different suits. So usually five, four or better. Um, the third type of hand you could have is a three-student hand. Um, three-student hands come in a few varieties. The classic is known as the four-by-one. Um, as described here, four by ones have four exactly four cards and three different shoots in a shortened one. You could also consider it's based, but you could also consider hands. Um, you know, um, there are some hybridish hands with twelve cards and three different suits. Um, so basically, you're shortened one suit, and maybe you have five, four, three, one between three different shapes. That's also technically a three suiter. It's kind of right in the middle. Because you, you, most of your, your strength might be in your two longer suits of the three. You might not have much strength in your three-card suit. And then the last type is four suitors or balanced hands. Um, a balanced hand is a hand um, that doesn't really have, um, that isn't really short in any one suit is the best way to think of it. So a balanced hand has at least two cards in every suit. Two cards in every suit, um, and the worst case of a balanced hand is like three cards in every suit and four cards in the other, right? Um, you don't really have much of anything, um, and that can be hard to describe. So here is kind of, we're going to get into the tree of what to ha open. So I'm actually going to start with unbalanced hands. Unbalanced hands, um, it's simple. If you have shortness somewhere... Um, that's how you know you know, for sure you have an unbalanced hand, right? You're not short in any suit. You're short in a suit, and you have a five-card or longer suit. It's really easy. If you have a five-card suit, you open it. Pretty simple. So, um, for example, maybe I have a hand with um, five hearts. Um, let me go to an example here because this person... Um, by the way, I'm using a very nice tool. Um, by a professor at Austin College named, I think, Truset um, Gates. His name's at the beginning of this PowerPoint. I downloaded his materials. Um, you're certainly welcome to, too. He usually has them online. Um, I, will, I might list, at some point, a list of websites um, with good teaching materials. I don't mean to, like, just steal his teaching materials, um, but I really like that one diagram. So I wanted to um, kind of take it and show it on this YouTube channel because I think he made, a re he made a really nice diagram. So, like, take a hand, like, the hand on the left, right? We are unbalanced because we are short in a suit. Um, this is technically a two or three suit, right, because you have spades and clubs. Um, so you would open this, you're in balance, and you have a five-card suit. Easy, you open it. Um, and we can go back to other scenarios. So he talks about what if you have two suits, like um, spades and hearts. Um, you tend to open the higher ranking of the suits, because um, the idea is eventually you're going to plan um, bidding. 
if you open, you're usually planning to take two bids. So you might open that first hand. Um, our simple strategy is to open a spade, and then we're going to bid clubs next. Because um, we want to show partner. That will give some idea where the majority of our cards are. Because um, you tend to open five card suits, and if you rebid a new suit, you tend to be implying at least four in the secondary suit in most situations. Um, so he just talks about what to do if you have two really long suits. That's not so important for now. Um, and then there's also the situation where um, you don't have a five card suit, um, and that will only be the four 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 one hands, where you're short in one suit and have four cards in the other. Um, you'll tend to open your longer minor in that situation um, because in most people will play a system where um, when you open one heart or one spade, you have to have five. And the reason for that is hearts and spades are the master suit, meaning they're higher ranking. Um, and for reasons we'll get into, those hands have... Um, it's easier to get to the bonus in hearts and spades than clubs and diamonds. They tend to score better. And because they're higher ranking in an auction, um, they tend to um, consume space from the opponent's a bit better and so they're it's better to compete in them there's slightly more incentive to compete in hearts and spades if you have them so we want those to show five to tell partner um ease more easily raise the suit um and so we tend to open um our longer minor when we're four by one and so what if you are a yucky four suitor um well we also have in our bidding box um if you saw in like the previous demos, you can also open no trump. Um, so the thing about no trump is we talked about describing strength and shape. The thing with no trump is no trump is a bit yucky because one no trump can't cover every single balanced hand, right? We talked about how you could have zero points to 37 points and you might be that balanced shape how do we we can describe our we can easily describe shape if we opened all those hands one no but we can't describe values and so um over time people have learned um that we want to split balance hands up into different ranges to more easily describe our strength to partner um so here's the deal so balanced hands of intermediate strength, um, which is you'll t learn in time is 15 to 17 high card points. Um, that's about an average of two kings above average, so intermediate. Remember, one king tends to be minimum opening, so two kings, an average of that is intermediate. Um, those hands tend to lie in open one no trump. Um, and then a series of really strong hands, 20 to 21, um, that's over... That's averaging over three kings above average, right? Those hands tend to open two no trump. And so we've decided over time that what's best is that hands that are weaker or in the middle between um, intermediate and really strong, they're going to lie and pretend to be on balance with their opening bid. So um, if you have a five card suit, you're going to open it. And if you don't have a five card suit, you're going to open. Um, the best minor that you can. So um, usually you want to open, we give priority to opening a four card minor if we have one. So if you don't have a five card suit to bid, you're going to line open your four card or longer minor if you have one. Um, very rarely you'll be stuck. Um, a hand like that is if you're four four in the majors. Um, you don't have a five card major to open. Um, so there's cases where you might only have a three card minor. Very, very rarely we'll lie and open a three-card minor, um, but usually we tend to open four-card suits at minimum. Um, and then you'll learn later that the plan is to open one of a minor, and then um, we also... The good thing about opening is that you get more than one bid, usually. Um, so we're going to open one of a minor, and the plan is to rebid no trump. And rebidding no trump later, um, by negative inference, because you didn't open one no trump, showing an intermediate... It'll usually show the weaker range, or if you open and jump in no trump, um, you're showing the intermediate range of like 18 to 19. Um, so kind of in summary, let's take, take a step back. So your goal as opener is to count your points 
count your shape, and your goal is to find an opening bid, um, and actually you want to have some idea of your rebid. So if you're an unbalanced hand, meaning you're short in at least one suit, you're going to open your longest suit if you can. We always strive to open five card suits. Um, and your plan is to rebid your secondary suit if you're two suited or three suited. Um, and if you're not two suited or three suited and you're unbalanced, that means you're one suited, so you'll plan to rebid your main suit. Um, so that's how unbalanced hands deal with. Um, and if you don't have a five card suit, um, you'll lie and open um, your longest four card suit. Um, and because we play five card majors, you'll open your longest four card <laughs> card minor. Um, and if you're balanced, um, and you, if you're balanced, we separate balanced hands into different ranges because there's a lot of balanced hands. And if you're an intermediate balanced hand, you open one no trump. If you're a bigger balanced hand, 20 to 21, you open two no trump. And if you're not in any of those categories, you're going to lie. So you're going to lie and open your five card suit if you have one, just like a minor. Um, and if you don't have a five card suit, you're going to open your longest four card minor. Um, and if you don't have a four card minor, you're going to lie and open your longer minor anyway. Um, so you'll notice that down here, um, this is basically the same strategy as opening an unbalanced hand. So if you're balanced and don't have a no, a no trump opening in the right range, you lie and open one of a minor and you rebid no trump. Um, so unbalanced hands open a suit. And rebid a new suit or the same suit. Balanced hands lie and open a suit and rebid no trump. Or instead, if they happen to have the really convenient hand, they open a no trump. Um, so that's opening in a nutshell. Um, maybe a little confusing for now, um, and that's okay. Um, it's good to see some examples. Um, but I'm glad we laid some of the fundamentals. Um, so in our next video. The plan will be to get into a little more of an auction because now that you know how to open, we can talk about the logic of how to respond. Um, and once we talk a little bit about that, um, you'll almost be ready to kind of start playing hands by yourself. Um, so thanks for watching and hope to see you next time here at Ace in the Desert. Um, so take care and stay safe everyone.